is uh, uh, Jose Luis Castro, who is, of course, the uh, executive director of the union and is the chairman of the board of the NCD Alliance, and, of course, the, uh, the uh, chairman of the and CEO of the uh, Vital Strategies, of course, Vital Strategies, and a very important tobacco control advocate, a passionate tobacco control researcher, and a people's person, someone that brings people together, brings tobacco control advocates together, tobacco control researchers together. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much for that kind of introduction. Uh, uh, European Commissioner, uh, Vera, Sacosta Silva, distinguished guests and, and friends. You know, so I, I was, yeah, thank you for inviting me to, to speak at, at this conference uh, uh, today. As I was uh, listening to Vera's presentation, her first slide shows uh, what appears to be like a large, very large fish or a balloon inflated in front of the, the WHO building. And this reminds me of a novel written by Ernest Hemingway uh, called The Old Man and the Sea. And for those of you who are not familiar or may not have read the novel, I'll tell you a couple of lines about that. It is, uh, it's about a fisherman named Santiago that has had a very bad uh, period, has not been able to fish for a long time. And this one Sunday, he goes out to the sea in his small boat. Uh, and catches a fish, a gigantic fish, bigger than his boat. And as he tries to steer the boat with that big fish, uh, it draws the attention of the uh, uh, of the sharks and other large fish in the area who come and start chewing away from Santiago's fish. He battles relentlessly against those. Uh, uh, sharks and, and, and fish around, but eventually, you know, they uh, eat his entire fish alone. Yeah, and then the entire fish. When he returns to the shore, uh, unfortunately for Santiago, only the skeleton uh, of the fish remains. And I was thinking that we have a big fish with the FCTC, the world's first treaty on health. And the FCTC is on attack, under attack from every, uh, in every part of the world by the industry, by the sharks, as in Santiago, and that's in the old man in the sea. And I think that it's the responsibility of all of us, of, of, all, uh, of all of us working in tobacco control, of governments, uh, and their bodies to protect and defend that treaty so that it um, doesn't have the same fate as. Um, uh, the fish and the old man and the sea. I want to uh, say a, a few remarks today about where I think that we can make some progress over the next year in tobacco and human rights. Yesterday I spoke uh, at the Global Forum on, on human rights and I think it's an issue that you know, I want to highlight again uh, here today at, uh, at this conference. Uh, and there seem, there are some things happening at, at the UN level that are important and and there are some developments with, with the tobacco industry interference that we must continue to fight uh, through our advocacy. It was a year ago this month at the last World Conference on Tobacco or Health in, um, that the Cape Town Declaration of Human Rights and the Tobacco Free World was endorsed by the participants um, in that conference. In that spirit, of the in the spirit of the declaration, I'm, I'm pleased that we are here together focusing on how we can apply human rights mechanisms to advance the framework of prevention. I think it's worth emphasizing one of the most important messages within that declaration, that the manufacture, marketing, and sale of tobacco are incompatible with human right to health. This uh, conference uh, and the forum yesterday showed that we have much more uh, recognition than ever before of the human rights dimensions of tobacco control and that we are eager to apply the human rights framework to tobacco control. We all have 
the right to achieve the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health. And when it comes to protecting that right, there might be no other area of public policy as important as tobacco control. For tens of millions of people around the world who have become addicted to tobacco products by using those products as intended, the tobacco industry remains one of the main obstacles to pursuing the right to health. At the United Nations level, it's important that the United Nations Human Rights Council supports the implementation of the Framework Convention. I would like to see that UN Human Rights Council adopt a resolution on tobacco control. This would provide a valuable tool for advocates to influence policy at the national level. Among other things, it will create a closer working relationship between the Human Rights Council and the Convention Secretariat. It will help us to embed support for the FCTC within national human rights plans. And it will help us clarify for policymakers exactly where tobacco control and human rights intersect. It's encouraging that the UN Intergovernmental Working Group on Transnational Corporations and other business enterprises with respect to uh, for, uh, with respect for human rights, which is part of the Human Rights Council, is paying close attention to the FCTC. Their mandate is to advance an internationally binding instrument to regulate activities of transnational corporations and business enterprises within human rights law. And the FCTC Secretariat is also actively participating in those negotiations. This regulation of the tobacco industry is so important. The industry has always used the rhetoric, rhetoric intended to confuse and mislead governments and the public. But now they are speaking the language of public health, even while we know that their goal is to weaken the implementation of the framework convention. And just as the analogy that I presented of the, old, uh, of the story of the old man and the fish, their in interference is not rhetorical. They are trying to take pieces away to weaken key components and interfere in the implementation of key components of the treaty. The Foundation for a Smoke Free World was founded with an enormous investment from Philip Morris. And now the foundation is trying to secure a seat at the table with public health policymakers around the world. We cannot let this happen. Even what they're telling the public about their business strategy appear, that appear, uh, appears to be misleading. They say that they're going to phase out the sale of traditional cigarettes. When they announced this, we saw the headlines, they said, uh, PMI has given up cigarettes. They even ran full page ads in newspapers on New Year's in 2018 saying, we are trying to give up cigarettes. Not, we are giving up cigarettes, but we are trying. That was more than one year ago. And PMI has not announced a timeline for stopping its sale of cigarettes. And it's not accountable for facing out the commercial sale of traditional cigarettes. I would like to see the Human Rights Council and the tobacco control communities hold the industry accountable for setting a deadline for ending their sale of cigarettes. Or if they won't set a deadline, perhaps it is up to us to set a deadline and campaign around that together. Because even though they are saying they're getting out of the cigarette business, the company is still making new investments in its capacity to produce cigarettes. In January, for example, it was reported that PMI was in negotiations to buy a large stake of Mastermind Tobacco, Kenya's second largest cigarette producer. And last year, BMI opened a new cigarette factory in Tanzania, 
which was inaugurated by the country's president. And while they're making these investments, Altria, its parent company, also recently acquired 35% stake in Juul, the electronic cigarette maker. So even though PMI has said that their strategy is to stop selling cigarettes, it looks like their objective is to maximize the sale um, of the sale and profit from all tobacco products, from cigarettes, from heated tobacco products, and from e-cigarettes, all at the expense of people's right to health. This makes it even this makes it makes it all the more urgent that we get a human rights decision at COP9. We were very close to getting one at the last COP and fell short, and I hope that we are successful this time. You know, thinking more about the big picture and, and where we stand with regards to implementing the Framework Convention, you know, governments are legally bound to implement the Framework Convention. And that is the minimum that we should expect them to do. The treaty encourages uh, state parties to implement measures beyond those required by the convention and its protocols. In advocacy, in general, uh, you almost always get less than what you ask for. So if you ask for the minimum of what you want, you're probably going to get even less so we have to ask for more. So if our goal at a minimum is to see the framework convention fully implemented, then as our starting point, maybe we need to nudge governments to go beyond the minimum standards set by the, the framework convention. I also think that there are some new approaches that we can be taking. One thing that we can do is raise a lot more visibility around the commercial determinants of health. The social determinants of health is a widely accepted framework for looking at health trends and for, develop and for developing solutions. But the commercial determinants of health as a frame isn't nearly as widely recognized. Even though it is also a very important way for looking for health, and it's actually becoming more and more relevant as we see uh, NCDs rise. Jeff Cole, the professor of global health at the University of Edinburgh, and others have been making the argument that the SDGs do not do enough to address the commercial determinants of health. So we need to develop approaches for addressing the commercial determinants of health. And one way that we can do this is to use these two frames together, the commercial determinants frame and the human rights frame. We can point to commercial determinants of health, and we can show where commercial determinants are at odds with human rights. And going back to my analogy again about the old man and the sea. Uh, we have a big task, a task to defend and to ensure that governments implement the framework convention. We have to stand up and ensure that we protect the FCTC from the attacks from the industry. We have to stand up to ensure that governments implement the the framework convention and we have to stand up so that the rights of people to health are not over, over overshadowed by a commercial uh, interest thank you very much and i wish you a successful conference <laughs>